Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, Dear James, and together with the Unseen Spirit Source and Symphony, we listen to the current energies, the unseen, the wisdom, and we go as guided. And if you if you noticed at the intro, I'm sitting there looking around and wondering, why is there no sound? <laughs> A little Mercury retrograde, even though it's not. Uh, technical glitch. So welcome. Welcome, Alicia. We have a lot. It's a new month, June of 2024. New energies. And actually, that is the theme, um, which we will jump into here. And let's just go to it right away. And I'll come back to literally our new our theme is navigating the new. We've only just begun. And of course, it's a song from the Carpenters. We've only just begun to live. And so there's this huge um, it's as you can see on your screen the images of blue topaz, white diamond. These are light codes, energy codes that are um, of the new. It is literally the new energy. They are crystalline based, not carbon based, and therefore it's all about navigating the new and this new energy, this levity and lightness that we have. And the interesting thing about this is I looked back because there was, it, it clicked this navigating the new. And so I looked back and approximately three weeks ago, the main theme was over the hump. Everything new emerges. And then we had having crested the mountain to climb, a new journey begins and there's rewards. Then it was followed by some like it hot, this lively, exciting. It was also uh, in regards to the Roman deity Invictus about being undefeated, unconquered, and everything changes, the song by Kathy uh, Tricoli. And then four was a burst of light, life, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. And that had to do with here comes the sun and the solar flares, and we have solar maximum. We are continuing to experience major um, solar flares, um, and we're reaching solar maximum. And last but not least, with that show on, on May 15th, was peak performance, drivers start your engines, and this aspect of go, go, go. And so we're tying these two, the, the Unseen is tying these two shows and these two events together, because one is about everything new emerges, and the other is about navigating the new. And we've only just begun to live. And so everything we've done in our lives up until this point, meaningful, purposeful, um, we wouldn't be here without it. And yet what the unseen is saying is, and yet we've only just begun to live. So there's a lot of incredible energy. So I'm going to jump into that main energies. We have, it's a six month, all month long. So we have that conflict and let go, letting go of the conflict cannot emphasize this enough. 
let go of any conflict, obstructions, things that are holding you back, weighing you down. Welcome, Ava. Let it go. Um, number five, nourished while waiting. It's it's a holdover from last month. So we have today is the fifth. So it's this nourished while waiting. We have everything we need, the patients. It's an eight year all year long. So uniting, unite, coming together. And we had this exactly. This was, again, the 19, the 10, and the 1 is exactly the same numerology that we had back on the 15th of May on Over the Hump, Everything New Emerges. So we have that 19 approach. We're advancing, 10, treading, cautious advance, being being aware, being conscientious of, of our actions, our words, um, what we're doing. And then, of course, 1, the creative force. It's to initiate, and it's... It denotes new beginnings. So these are the powerful numbers and the numerology. Now let's look at the astrological influences because, oops, that's the chart I want to come to next, but here's the astrological influences. And the theme of this chart that I just pulled, uh, pulled up and we're going to go back to, it has to do with the Gemini new moon that is occurring tomorrow on the 6th. So 6-6-2024. On June 2nd, we had that once in a lifetime Jupiter trine Pluto, and it's still in effect. And so now we have then on the fourth, we had Sun and Venus Kazemi, meaning Venus is in the heart of the Sun. She is being, it's her Phoenix rising moment. Everything from the past cycle is being burned away, and she is renewed. Then on the sixth, tomorrow is the new moon, 16 degrees Gemini. And then on the eighth, which is uh, Saturday, I believe, Mars enters Taurus. And so the actionary um, is moving, you know, our creative force, the, the divine masculine is moving into the sign of Taurus, which is an earth sign. And it's, so it's about getting things done. But the whole thing is about new beginnings. And so now let's look at the astrological chart. And this is where it gets fascinating. So what you will see in the bottom uh, in the center of the chart, at the bottom, just slightly to the left, you'll see what's called a stellium of planets, meaning there are five planets all in Gemini. It starts with Jupiter at two degrees, there is Mercury at six degrees, and then we have the new moon, the sun, and Venus all at 16 degrees. Now, what's very interesting about this, the 16 degrees, and then and you can see the uh, the harmonic line all of these are then aspecting Pluto. So that Jupiter, Pluto trine, and then this whole new moon conjunct Venus next to, you know, conjunct Mercury, conjunct Jupiter, all of it aspecting Pluto. And what struck me about that when I was looking at this astrological wheel, and I kept hearing 51, and hexagram 51 is shock. And it has to do, and it corresponds in the tarot with the tower card. Interestingly enough, what's the number associated with the tower card in the tarot? 16. It's card number, it's major arcana card 16. And so we're going to look at hexagram 51, shock, kind of shock and awe. And again, it can be perceived as both positive and negative. However, the shock, the, the tower is nonetheless divine and neutral. Um, so we're going to look at hexagram 51, we're going to look at the tower, and then we're going to look at this Gemini chart, um, because it's all about the new. These, this, There's such a powerful force, the unseen is saying, there's such a powerful force, an emphasis, an impetus on us moving forward, advancing. And the actual joy and rewards of that. And the first thing the unseen said for this week for the energies was joyous occasions abound, delight in their plenty. So joyous occasions abound, delight in their plenty. And that being the first thing is, is representative of navigating the new. Navigating the new, smile on my face, <laughs> hope you can hear it in my voice. It's a sense of joy. It's a sense of awe and wonder. It's a sense of magic. It's a sense of things we have not experienced before. 
and they are coming and and yes it's against the backdrop of the past 2000 year you know piscean patriarchal rule era collapsing it's loud it's not pretty it's uncomfortable um and we are all meant to bear witness to it so that when we are when we receive and experience the new we know to navigate in its purity in its joy in its innocence its youthfulness its discovery it's a whole it's a whole new world it's a whole new way and that's the point of it so we're six conflict let go we're meant to let go so just bringing back up again really quickly our main theme navigating the new we've only just begun Blue topaz, white diamond, crystalline light codes. It's crystalline, it's not carbon. So we are moving up an octave. We are, you know, in French they say très léger. It's it, we're getting lighter. It's it's very light. So everything moves faster, more fluid. It's Gemini, air, Aquarius, air. Things will move faster. And I want to bring up and in concert with this, then, and with our astrological influences, it's new beginnings. And then our key word here, investiture. And this is part of one of the Sabian symbols, but investiture. The act or process of investing, the formal bestowal, confirmation, or presentation of rank, office, or a possessory or prescriptive right, usually involving the giving of insignia or an official title. Lay investiture means the state of being invested as with a garment, quality, or office. So investiture, being given our rainbow light bodies, our garments of light, this where we go from the density, carbon-based density of flesh, to crystalline light, and it's a rainbow light body. It's a lifting, and it's a bestowal. It's an honor. And last but not least, with investiture, this is from the Royal UK, uh, and it says, an investiture is the very special day when someone who has been awarded an honor receives their award in person from a member of the royal family. Remember, royal families represent divinity. They're the earthly representation of divinity. And so here there is, again, it's a special day. When someone's being awarded, they and they receive their their award in person. That's our key word, so keep that in mind, investiture. And then our mantra, and I love this image. I advance beyond my known reality. And this could not be more true with navigating the new we've only just begun to live. And what you see is, again, the, it's like a, a large clock piece antique clock piece and it's astrological and it's representing all of the symbols of the zodiac and and you'll note that there are a few what appear to be quote-unquote blackbirds but birds birds denote messenger they're messengers from spirit from higher realms and then you also see a hot air balloon with kind of a a device a propeller device that reminds me of the movie uh pan the uh where they have the, you know, the ship is kind of navigated with this hot air balloon. So there's, it denotes adventure. It denotes a new world. It denotes, you know, Pan was able to open the, the fairy realm. So this realm beyond. So I advance beyond my known reality. And the unseen has been speaking to us about the more aligned we are, the more in soul source connection we are, the more we suspend judgment so that we receive. We don't kill it before we receive it. The magic, the awe, and wonder of the new comes forward. We're able to embody it, receive it, interact with it, um, and experience it in that way. So let's jump into, I want to go to, um, as I get here, give me a second. There we are. So I'm going to share my screen. And this is Astrology by Lauren, and she is speaking to the Jupiter trine Pluto and the new moon in Jupiter, new moon, pardon me, new moon in Gemini, and 
So what she speaks of, this is, she says, and this is a beautiful quote by Arundhati Roy, another world is not only possible, she is on her way. On a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. The unseen since we began this journey in November of 2017. November 17th, 2021. Apologies. Boy, I must double mercury here. It's just a glorious day for me, as you all can see. The point is, they, the unseen, have been speaking to us about a whole new world, a whole new way of being. And here, this beautiful quote, another world is not only possible, she is on her way. So a whole new earth, a whole new way of being. On a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. Jupiter trine Pluto. As Jupiter just entered Gemini on the 25th, it applied to a trine to Pluto. Trines open up doors of communication between the planets. They are able to talk and work together in a way that benefits and harmonizes with one another. Pluto's aim is for us to evolve, while Jupiter aims for us to expand our vision and perspective and think in terms of larger possibilities as well as consequences. Remember from last week, truth and consequences. So we're in this window of expansion, of seeing beyond our known realities, of a whole new world. Together, they offer opportunities to evolve, uh, reevaluate, and reexamine ideas that, uh, that we may have previously taken for granted. So again, we often take things for granted, and we don't look at what's right before us. But they also are urging us to reach a higher potential. Jupiter trine Pluto is a transit that can literally move mountains and change our perspective so that what once seemed impossible is now more achievable. So we have this beautiful aspect, this once in a lifetime, Jupiter trine Pluto. And it's saying to us, you know, expect the unexpected, that what was impossible is achievable because it's it's today. It's it's the now. It's the new. This, this is important. For beginning as early as August, Jupiter will then make a different sort of relationship with Pluto, one which challenges us to meet our potential even in the face of what may seem extraordinary odds. Jupiter trine Pluto is ambitious, but it is also just. Now, Astrology by Lauren repeats this line again, and I thought it was really Funny because, again, Gemini, the twins, Castor and Pollux, Pollux, and she's duplicating this line. And there are no mistakes. It's purposeful. So Pluto is ambitious, but it is also just. Jupiter trine Pluto is ambitious, but it is also just. And the trine implies that what might have seemed impossible before can now be achieved when you are willing to reach beyond your previous expectations and believe impossibility. This is emptying the vessel. It's about purifying our um, our psyche, our ego mind personalities, allowing the soul to lead. And it's, it's, it's literally purifying and emptying all of that to make room for what's possible. Therefore, use the Jupiter-Pluto trine, which becomes exact on Sunday, June t- uh, 2nd, to think in terms of those things that have vastly improved your life and the ways in which you want to improve your life even further. So it's about, you know, it's about looking, the glass is half full, not half empty. And thereby, how do we fill it up with even more of the things that have improved our life? The ways in which you can use your knowledge, your position, your skills, and your resources to improve the lives of others or the world in which we live holding those in power accountable for their moral and ethical decisions, looking at the way we use our personal power and resources and whether or not we are living up to our ethical and moral standards, placing oneself in service to a larger cause or a larger movement, something that feels bigger than ourselves, something that feels really important. So here, Lauren, Astrology by Lauren, she's speaking to the fact that this is Aquarian at its highest and finest, a purpose greater than ourselves. It's, are we walking the talk? Are we holding ourselves to a high ethical and moral standard? Are we utilizing our gifts? 
not only for ourselves, but for the benefit of all, or for the benefit of many, is the purity of the intention at the forefront. It's all about light and very, and not about shadow. It's, it's about the fact that we've purified the shadow. That's what this opportunity is that she's speaking to. She goes on to say, not only is there an exact trine between Jupiter and Pluto this week, but it is also accompanied by Mercury, the ruling planet of the upcoming Gemini new moon, which will be conjunct Jupiter on Tuesday, June 4th, and trine Pluto the same day. As a result, the new moon on the 6th is also speaking to the Jupiter-Pluto trine and inspiring us to more fully reach our own potential, perhaps even in ways that might not have that we have not even thought possible. So again, there's a massive theme here about the impossible or what was not even thought of as possible being possible and how we arrive there, that we do so aligning to our true north, aligning to our soul source connection, having faith and trust in the fact that when we do that and we keep doing it, it will deliver us and it teaches us how to navigate the new. This is the new. There's no subterfuge. There's no, you know, kill or be killed. There's no, um, you know, the shadow aspects of the Piscean patriarchal era. That's over. We've done it, been there, done that. This is all about aligning with the Aquarian age, with the divine feminine, and the best of her, the best of that. And all of that is within ourselves. It's already there. We, we contain it. We hold it. We embody it. Now it's bringing it to the forefront. With the Gemini new moon on, on uh, June 6th, we have a new moon at 16 degrees Gemini. That degree, again, relates to the tower card in the tarot. So you can see how this is, we'll, we'll tie this together. Gemini is a sign of wit and dexterity, filled with restless curiosity and the changing tides of the season. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, this is when spring makes way for summer, and we all emerge from our, den, uh, from our dens, greet our neighbors, and share the news of the day. So there's unity, there's emergence, there's advance. There's renewal. Gemini is a Mercury sign, and Mercury returns home to Gemini on Monday, where it has free reign to reach its potential. Made all the, and that's important, where it reaches its potential. We are reaching our potential in navigating the new. It's all about an upgrade, an octave higher. It's not the status quo, it's not humdrum, it's not the past, it's not going back. It is reaching higher. Made all the larger by Mercury's conjunction to expansive Jupiter and its time to powerful Pluto, new moons are also times of great potential when we gather seeds of inspiration and look for fertile ground that will allow these seeds to grow. In this time of newness, with the birth of the Gemini lunar month, we are all being inspired to reach even a little bit beyond our previous expectations beyond our previous, beyond our known reality. It's our opportunity to exceed expectations, to witness a reality that is different than the one we've known. The new moon itself, conjunct Venus and sextile the north node in Aries, is asking us to seek out our allies and friends. It's about finding your tribe. It's about, and it's not about, oh, only aligning with those that think the way we think or act the way we act. That's not the moral. The moral is in our diversity. It's unity in diversity. It's that beauty in, wow, when we come together with like-minded allies and friends and also diverse allies and friends, we bring out the best in each other. We reflect and shine our light And so we expand, we grow, we advance. Those people who share the same path, the same views and mindsets, look not only for people who get you, but who will also stand by you when the going gets tough in the foreseeable and not so seeable future. For those allies will constantly remind us that we are not alone. And again, remember, it's not about, you know, Stepford Wives and the cloning and, you know, we're all identical. No. However, What's at our center, what's at our core, 
is what's aligned. And it is magnified and amplified and shared through its unity and diversity. And that they've got us. So that these this tribe, they've got us no matter what. Because they'll see in each of us, as differently as we are, what's common is the purity, the depth, what's at your center, your character. There is also a reminder here that with our loved ones at our side, we can accomplish so much more than we possibly could on our own. And remember, our loved ones, loved ones, family, friends, colleagues, co-workers, those like-minded of character that place the value of life and respect and honor and care and empathy and compassion on a higher plateau, a higher level. The new moon and Venus are also square Saturn while sesquiquadrate Pluto, a nod to the prevailing Saturn-Pluto semi-square. Lauren is saying we will speak more to this, not very minor aspect next week. Just know that its influence within the bounds of the new moon is more complex than meets the eye. And that although it may appear to be that we are being guided along a certain path and that we will receive the support that is needed to keep us there that there might also be some hard decisions going forward in order to complete that journey. This is speaking to the fact that Saturn is going to play a role in holding our feet to the fire. Saturn is going to say, the great teacher is going to say to us, it must be done this way, this way meaning with honor, with integrity, with purity, with transparency, with truth. Anything short of that is going to meet consequences, obstructions. It's going to hold our feet to the fire. And it's also, Saturn is going to also, so all of this advance and abundance in the new, it's going to ensure that we're navigating it in the new, the new way, not the old way. Because the old way, no longer, doesn't work anymore. As a result, this moon also speaks to the magnitude of our decisions going forward and how these can affect the very course of our lives, perhaps even for years to come. So these, this moment, this new moon in Gemini, it really is denoting, it's a cornucopia, a plethora of opportunity. And Saturn, and it's trying Pluto, so it's all about advancing to the new dismantling the old, but its its focus is about the new. And then there's Saturn saying, um, it, it, they're showing me, the unseen is showing me like herding cattle and in, in the most beautiful way, meaning there's a destination, there's a journey, there's a an intent, a purpose. And so it's to navigate, to flow with this herd of cattle, to move them in the right direction, to keep them going where, for the benefit of, Maybe it's to graze in a new pasture or something, but there's nourishment, there's abundance, there's opportunity. So Saturn is there keeping them, keeping us from growing astray or from turning back or from trying to deviate in a way that would diminish or undermine the goal, which is the advance of and the entry into the new. So. Um, yes, uh, Alicia saying better than herding cats. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, and I just want to bring this up again. It's our mantra. I advance beyond my known reality. And the reason it's being emphasized is because tower moments. It's not about staying stuck, stagnant, reversing, going backwards. It is about this beautiful, you know, wisdom from spirit, from the unseen. This timepiece, this astrological, you know, divine time, this hot air balloon that is floating through the air that's taking us to a new place. It's an adventure. And so, and all of that, how the tower plays a role. So now let's jump into, um, and let me bring up, here we are. It'll come back to me. It's somewhere on one of these May. Perhaps it's, 
Oh, goodness. You can see, I don't know about you all, but these energies, I'm, I'm doing good, but I feel a little discombobulated, and that's obviously evident. <laughs> so bear with me. Uh, it's our first quote. There we are. That which goes against the way comes to an early end. And what you see is an image of the tower card in the tarot, card number 16, this new moon. So the moon, the sun, and Venus, all at 16 degrees. That which goes against the way comes to an early end. And so keep this image of the tower, and we're going to have two explanations, two definitions about this. The first one we're going to go to is from tarot.com. And the tower, it says, in practically all renditions of the tower card, disaster is striking or has just struck. The demons of madness and despair are released from ancient hiding places, and nature conspires with human failings to destabilize a society. The upheaval is collective and impersonal. Let us remember these images were created for the educated nobles and clergy, reminding them that this was from the Renaissance time. So reminding them that they have the most to lose if the hierarchy is toppled. So this was about saying to those in power, do right by others. So Piscean, patriarchal rule, noble men, noble peoples, clergy. It's a reminder. The tower card is a reminder to what happens if the hierarchy is toppled. Lightning is a fitting karmic payback for the guilt of those whose fortunes come from the exploitation or abuse of others. A modern subtitle might be revolution. Pluto and Aquarius, not since the French, American, and Industrial Revolutions. So a modern subtitle might be revolution, indicating that through drastic social change, oppressed people can find renewed hope of better times. We are witnessing this on a global scale at this moment. The tower experience comes like a flash of lightning to topple the hierarchy of the old order, after which everyone can have a fresh start on a more equal footing. So this is very applicable. Now our second definition of the tower. And this was what kept coming when I looked at the, the astrology chart for the Gemini new moon. I just kept hearing over and over again, 51, 51, 51. It's shock and awe. It's thunder and, and how it moves us. It, trans, it, it transforms us. The next one is, this is from Sarah Potter in Cosmopolitan Magazine. And she says, is there a more intimidating tarot card in the deck than the tower? Eyes widen, jaws drop, and hearts begin to race when this card is turned over. But the appearance of the tower in a reading is nothing to fear. This is the card of change, and most people, understandably, fear the thought of change, especially unexpected, dramatic, wild change. However, remember, it's neither positive or negative. It's divine and neutral. It is happening for us. The tower indicates the kind of radical change that throws you into a wild upheaval. Everything is going to be different from here on out because nothing can ever stay the same forever. But change isn't negative. If something's not working, it must change. And this clearly isn't sustainable in its current incarnation. Sometimes we need a full 180. We need a full 180 degree turn. Sometimes the only resolution is complete and utter destruction. Sometimes the only way to create new growth is to burn everything you know to the ground and start again. And yes, that is dramatic, but oftentimes major transitions must be substantial, climatic, and outrageously disruptive to get us to where we need to be. So again, we are moving, it's, it, we're moving from earth to air. We are moving rapidly. We're going up an octave, back to where we began, but an octave higher. So, and this need for change comes. So it, yes, on a world scale, you know, bearing witness to what's transpiring, it's brutal. And yet it clears the way for elevation, for advance, for um, equality, for an ability for 
all of us as divine beings, human beings, divine beings, to come together, unity, uniting. Keywords for the tower, sudden change, upheaval, destruction, chaos, transformation, resistance to change, delaying the inevitable, unexpected endings. So remember, person, places, things, institutions, governments, it is for us to be positive and proactive. Don't wait for the cosmic two by four to come along and smack you, you know, for a tower moment to smack you into consciousness. Be proactive. It will be stirring within you. You'll know what's right and wrong. You'll know what the calling is, what the need is. Embrace it. Be proactive. Participate so that it's not a reactive experience. The tower upright meaning. Sarah Potter, she goes on to say, nothing can really stay the same forever, but isn't that such a blessing? We always have the power to change. We can change our minds. We can change our goals. We can change our dreams. We are always changing and evolving, and these transformations illuminate our truths. When you realize that the dynamic you're in isn't working, then why keep participating in something that just isn't, quote, right? Why keep going through the motions? When the foundation you have built something on is faulty, the tower will most certainly take it out so you can begin again and rebuild. You know it can be better than this. In fact, you totally deserve better than this. So again, there's an inner awareness. Our soul source connection, our true north, we're going to know what we built with less than great intentions, you know, the purity of intention, if it was illicit, the shadow, we're going to know, did we do something because we wanted something in return, strings attached, all of that shadow work. Well, the tower will come along and collapse it so that we can begin again because we deserve better. We know better. We have to trust ourselves to do better, to be better. This is an opportunity to explore your relationship with change and why the idea of a major shift feels so frightening right now. Change doesn't have to be a bad thing, and it certainly doesn't mean that your situation is going to get worse than it already is. It might feel difficult or unsettling at first, but the pain is merely temporary. This is Saturn hurting us in the right direction. We're going to bump up against Saturn to ensure that we do it right. Eventually, the rubble smooths out, the mess of destruction is cleaned up, and space for something new is created. Everything does get or become manageable, easier, and better than it was before. Again, and, and amplified so, magnified when we're proactive, when we're one with it, we're going with it. The benefits that come from invoking much-needed change will be long-lasting. These are the moments that remind us that leaning into change is a wonderful gift. The tower card reversed. Now, this is an upright tower card, but we're going to share this so that we have a full picture of everything. A tower card reversed means we all know when the winds of change are coming, and I don't think you need to see the tower card in order to realize what you already know to be true. When we're listening to our inner wisdom, our inner divinity, our inner knowing, we already know what's true. We already know what's being asked of us. Is it to leave a job, a relationship? Is it to advance? Is it to say what we are afraid to say to someone? Is it to share ourselves in a way that is scary? And yet, what's on the other side of the rainbow? A pot of gold, something great. So we walk through the fire, and then you look back, and you'll say, wow, why did I wait so long? Why didn't I do that sooner? Resisting the inevitability of change is futile. You have probably known for at least a little while that this current dynamic situation, life path, whatever, just isn't working. It can feel intimidating to unravel and uncover where to begin to create the shift that needs to happen. However, is so we may not know where to begin, and yet what you will absolutely know is that change is upon you and that you only need to keep taking the next step. Just keep taking, break it all down step by step. Do not become overwhelmed. The, the analogy I often use is to save the world. 
Well, that's a massive task. And most people would give up before they ever started. However, you can say, okay, my objective is to save the world. What's my first step? Soul source. God, Allah, Buddha, all that is. What's the first step? And you're, you're given a, a knowing, an awareness, and you take the first step. You accomplish that. What's the next step? And it starts building upon itself. And you can apply this in your individual lives, in our individual lives. What's the next step? Am I to move? Am I to leave a job? Am I to leave a relationship? Am I, how am I to advance? And just take the next step, step by step. Um, you might not know exactly where to begin, but you must start somewhere. You may be able to delay the inevitable slightly, but eventually you need to face the music and commit to making major changes in your life. It's beneficial to do it sooner rather than later because, again, the universe, the unseen, spirit, source, and symphony, your guides, you're going to get the knowing, you're going to get the awareness, and you might try to delay, procrastinate, and it's going to get a little bit louder, and then it's going to be flashing yellow lights. Then you're going to get to the red flashing lights. It's going to get louder. And then it's going to be a reactive cosmic two by four tower moment. I beg of you, avoid that. (laughs) Be proactive. Take the step by step and start moving things and advance yourself. Sarah goes on to say, being at the forefront and directing the transition keeps you in the position of power. See that you're empowered. It's proactive, not reactive. And even though it's scary, and you may not know the whole picture, what you do know is that it's right. It feels right. And what's on the other side of the fire, you know, the baptism by fire, the walking through fire, is a re- an unknown reality. It's moving beyond my known reality. She's saying, so this position of power, she goes, that way, rather than change being forced upon you, you, in capital letters, take the lead. Let go, conflict, let go of that false sense of security you have from the mundane of your current situation. See, the ego, the identity, the people, places, things, the labels, the masks, all that stuff, we we build them up to make ourselves feel safe and secure. But that's a false identity. It's an illusion. And so by letting go of it, by letting go of the the mundane, we advance. She goes on to say, don't be afraid to see the truth. And oh my gosh, please don't let change just happen to you. Now, I slightly disagree with her on this because when we go with the flow, it's active, it's proactive. And so in not knowing, it's, it's... you know, Carrie Underwood, Jesus, take the wheel. Okay, we've taken our hands off the wheel. And that is allowing change to happen for us, with us, because we are active in it. We are one with it. We're in the flow. We're aligned. We may not know what the step is, but when it presents itself, we go with it. She said, let's be honest. It's never really a surprise. But denial can be all-consuming with its trickery. So this is the shadow aspect. Summon all of your courage and face the undeniable reality so you can make the necessary changes now before this gets any worse. It's so much better to be the creator of your own destiny, even when it's difficult to do so. And the beauty of this is that this tower, this moment, these tower moments, this beautiful, bringing up the astrological chart, This Gemini new moon, conjunct Venus, conjunct Mercury, conjunct, it's it's out of uh, 10 degrees, but it's with Jupiter, it's trining Pluto, it's all of this beautiful, magnified, amplified energy, and it's going to be doubles because it's Gemini, and Gemini, the twins, Castor and Pollux. Boom, double boom, double offerings, double experiences, double choices, double winnings. There's doubles about this. So you may literally experience things 
like you'll have doubles, double job offers, or one might say no and the other one says yes. You'll experience these things in doubles because it's coming under the sign of Gemini, the twins. And this is coming from the unseen. And so again, double offerings, double experiences, double choices, double winnings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Number three from the unseen, they said, heightened glory. Revel in the madness, the chaos, the celebration, the esteem, the interest. So heightened glory. Revel in the... So this is about rewards. Remember, it's about rewards. It's about advance. It's about... So it's heightened glory. It's heightened... And they want... The unseen wants us to revel in like the madness, the chaos, the celebration, you know, the interest, the esteem. So however it may come, these experiences, because, you know, individual, so micro, macro. But it's to say, you know, so say something again, an unexpected tower that you get this job offering or the job, you, you know, the job of your dreams or something that you've always wanted to do. There can be madness and chaos and celebration and interest and esteem in that. Because uh, can you believe that happened? Or how did that even happen? I wasn't even looking. Or you turn the corner and boom, you you know, your soul partner and, you know, future spouse and everything. Boom. Oneness together. How did that happen? The madness of it, the, the impossibility of it. And yet right on time divine time. So heightened glory, revel in the madness, the chaos, the celebration, the esteem, and the interest of it. Because again, when we, and not judge, don't judge it, revel in it. Allow it to permeate, allow it to broaden and expand and advance you. Because number four, they said, ain't no mountain high enough. It's Diana Ross, and the point was, it's number four, it's foundation on there, and the unseen is saying, ain't no mountain high enough. Nothing we can't accomplish when we operate from the heart, from the soul, from the purity of intention. To not do that, Saturn's going to be there, whack, 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 moving us into alignment. It can be soft, it can be gentle, it can be just brutal and hard, depending on how out of alignment you may be in what you're doing. However, the message from the unseen is, ain't no mountain high enough. Nothing we can't accomplish when we operate and align from our heart and soul, from our true north. And it was, and they said, alignment for the good of all and or many. So all that we're doing, and this has been true from time immemorial, for the good of all or many. We have gotten so far away from that where we know it's bad. What, we, what A choice we're making as a, a leader in a, cor- a corporation, a company, a government that's going to harm individuals. And, when, and we do it anyways. We t- we've turned a blind eye. So we've gone so far away from the purity, from this goodness and alignment for the good of all, for the good. And now in the new, navigating the new, it's all about alignment for the good of all. It's Aquarian. How do I show up a purpose greater than myself? How do I show up? And what are my actions and the purity of my intentions and everything? And, you know, it's, it's the, it's the oath of the Hippocratic oath, do no harm. If there's harm involved and you know there's harm involved, stop. It's number five. Stop in the name of love. It's the Supremes. And they said, the the unseen said, stop in the name of love. Actions speak louder than words. And so in this stop in the name of love, love of self, love of country, love of commitment, love of what's right. If it's not right, if it's if it's a if it violates do no harm, and industry leaders, visionaries, entrepreneurs, government leaders, 
managers, of peoples. This is the Aquarian age. It is the age of the divine feminine, of the matriarchal rule, harmony, balance, equality, we the people. If it's not in alignment with that, you're going to have serious tower moments in our individual lives. If we're being shady and sneaky and less than, you're going to have serious tower moment experiences. Cosmic two by fours. Because Saturn is right there holding the line, saying, go this way. Oh, you don't want to go that way? Whack! And back you go. (laughs) So much better to have beautiful tower moments where the tower moment is a surprise. It might be a shock. It may come out, it may be unexpected. However, it's proactive because it's in alignment with the purity of the era, the age, the advance. And that is where, um, that's where we find ourselves. And, and what a great place to be. Because again, the ideal becomes the new reality. We have been slogging this hill for millennia and you know, attempting to get it right. And the moral of the story from the unseen is, we do get it right. The ideal becomes the new reality, and thereby, you know, the quicker, faster that we're in alignment with that and we're on board, the better. Because the old isn't going to be allowed to continue in the way it, they're going to try. But, but watch the chaos. Watch the destruction. Watch the madness. We're, we're already seeing it on the world stage. Because, as they say, the old idiom, that dog don't hunt anymore. It's not the way of the new. It's not how you navigate in the new. All right, let's move lastly to um, hexagram 51. And again, shocking. Its action is to arouse. See, it's, it's to wake us up. It's to bring us to consciousness. It is not to harm us. It is not to destroy us. It is to awaken us, to arouse us, to bring us to a place of consciousness. It's hidden influence, obstruction, innovate, like there's Saturn. Oh, I'm going to, there's an obstruction here because you're not meant to go this way. Innovate, go this way. Figure out how to go, how to align with true north. Its underlining cause, penetration, permeate. Success comes when you achieve tranquility in disturbance. So success is when we achieve tranquility in disturbance. Eye of the hurricane, being in the, in the eye of the storm. It's calm. Everything else, madness, chaos. The gem, this is by Confucius. The gem cannot be polished without friction, nor man perfected without trials. So in the challenge is the opportunity. The mistake is a choice. Everything is a choice. Reading at a glance. When children ride roller coasters, they discover that allowing fear to have expression is energizing. If only we could always remain joyous in approaching our fears as we move along our dusty road. Unfortunately, we grow complacent and seek security and stasis. (coughs) Pardon me. Anything in nature that becomes stagnant will be re-energized by the unexpected. Shock brings success. Shock comes. Uh (coughs) Uh-oh. Whether hurricanes balance ocean temperatures or tumultuous autumn and spring storms invigorate new growth, nobody can hide from nature's power to keep all things thriving. The shocking can symbolize the unexpected things that generate emotion and wake us up. This is from Carrie Hone at CafeOSoul.com. It can symbolize the fear of intimacy that is suddenly awakened as stirrings of unexpected love. It can represent changes you didn't ask for but are good for you. The underlining cause of penetration showed by a period of rest and concession. 
But now it's time to stir things up. The hidden influence of obstruction is always a call to innovate. Feelings can be rising that are quite unfamiliar, but refreshingly new. What worked in the past will no longer do. The two words most associated with Zen, with shock, is uh uh-oh. However, it should be viewed in the same laughing sentiment as children riding a roller coaster. Something is coming that is unexpected, but is meant to awaken you to how you hide. Each day we witness the mutability of nature and fail to recognize it in our own life. Nature is always constantly evolving, changing, progressing, advancing, renewing itself. We are no different. We are a part of nature. No matter the event, the pace may quicken and you may suddenly find your heart racing and a smile on your face. There is a beauty in the sense that I said earlier, there's a beauty in this Gemini new moon, this stellium of planets in Gemini, all aspecting, positively aspecting Pluto, Saturn holding the line, and how navigating their they are they the unseen are awakening us to how to navigate in the new because we've only just begun to live and it's that is based on a song from the carpenters and it says we've only just begun to live white lace and promises purity and promises a kiss for luck and we're on our way we've only just begun before the rising sun we fly So many roads to choose. We start out walking and learn to run. And yes, we've just begun. Sharing horizons that are new to us. Watching the signs along the way. Talking it over, just the two of us. Soul source, God, partner, spouse, co-worker. Working together, day to day. Together. And when the evening comes, we smile. So much of life ahead. We find a place where there's room to grow. And yes, we've just begun. The moral of the story is we have truly just begun to live. To live in the new. To navigate the new. This beautiful Aquarian matriarchal era. This return to the Divine Mother. To the Divine Feminine. And whether male or female, transgender, whatever it may be, we are both divine masculine and divine feminine. Divine. And thereby, how do we bring these two divine aspects, the masculine and the feminine, how do we bring them together in harmony and unity for all, for the good of all, for the good of many? It's not about one oppressing or suppressing or dominating the other. That's where we've been. But that is not where we are and where we're going. And so as we advance, and also with Venus, uh, where Venus is in this Gemini new moon chart, um, it's known as the Venus star point, and it marks the midpoint. So Venus makes a uh, five-pointed star, a pentagram, in in the heavens, in the sky. And on each point or arm of the star, there's a beginning point, a middle point, and an end point per each uh, lateral line of the star. This marks the Venus star point, the midpoint of this Venus star point. So the Venus Kazemi, these solar flares... This Gemini new moon, the tower, the shock, the awe of it. Powerful energy, beautiful energy. Joyous occasions abound. Delight in their plenty. Heightens glory. Revel in the madness, the chaos, the celebration, the esteem, and the interest. Because you're going to have tower moments, joyous moments, Um, moments that move and advance you and it's how we interact how we accept how we go with the flow because there ain't no mountain high enough there's nothing we can't accomplish 
simply a line for the good of all and many, we the people. And if it's not that, stop in the name of love, because actions speak louder than words, and it's about the love of self. Are you honoring yourself? Are you honoring your community, your country, your business, your institution? Are you honoring your commitment? Are you honoring what's right? And don't let anyone tell you or talk you out of understanding. Because it's a knowing. What's right is a knowing. It's not ego, mind, personality. It's soul source connection, true right. Ego, mind, personality can attempt to override what's right. Delay it, divert it, do it anyways. But the powers that be, as above, so below, this planetary lineup, this stellium, this once-in-a-lifetime trine, Jupiter-Pluto trine, Saturn holding the line, it all says, "Mm -mm -mm. been there, done that, we're not doing that, we're going this way, and the new, navigating the new, is all about goodness. Unity, harmony, do no harm. The ideal is the new reality. I love you all so much. Thank you for your comments, your questions, your presence. It's a huge, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful kickoff for the energies uh, of Gemini and June and, and the new, navigating in the new. So can't wait to share what the unseen has for us next, next week. Until then, be well and be guided by your soul source connection. Love you all.